Ladies and gentlemen, Side Strafe back with some more World of Tanks, taking a look at the 8.5 public test server, more specifically looking at two of the new German tanks, the Leopard Prototype and the Leopard 1. Looks like we're going to battle it out over this hill. I'm in the Leopard Prototype for this matchup. Now, I'm sure most of you have played these by now, if you've been able to get into the test server. Obviously, there's been a queue. It's been quite difficult. Don't think I've ever seen a queue in the test server. Don't know what's different. But, um... These tanks are pretty sharp. No armor to speak of. Very, very weak. Paper thin. Definitely not for those of you that are looking for some sort of brawler. But it all comes down to the maneuverability. The speed. 64 kilometers. And, of course, the very accurate and powerful main guns. The one on this prototype, the final main gun, I believe, is actually from the British Centurion. The Royal Ordnance 105. But the Leopard 1 uh, maintains a, a German weapon, I believe. And changes things up a bit with a faster rate of fire and superb accuracy at .3. Which is just intense. Don't think I'm going to do much to that from here. We'll see what's going on. Try to maintain some sort of hull down while we get some more spotting. Looks like our team is doing pretty well. No, well, it's about it. We got one tank over them, so we'll see what happens. I don't have my abilities on this tank, obviously, since we're on a test server, so I don't have sixth sense or anything like that. So we need to be careful. Again, you get hit in this tank. If you manage to bounce, it's pretty much luck. Maybe you scrape something off of the turret or the gun mantlet, but not much more than that. So we'll sit up here, snipe. My suggestions for this tank would be to use it as a mobile sniper or in a better situation as a flanker. But again, you need to be careful. Make sure that you're supporting other units when you're doing that. I'll try to get into position here and let them have it there. But that looked like a track shot. Not much else. Got to wait for the reload on this main gun. We are pretty much used to that, though, having dealt with the Centurions. Shot out, 367, but we already took a hit in exchange. More so, I needed to set up in the bushes. Wow, that hurt. That looks like it was a piece of artillery. Not going to use my kit just yet. Perhaps repositioning would be a good idea as well. I'd like to stay here and fire at those targets, but I guarantee that I'll have to deal with Artie if I stick around. For too long, let's see if we've got any eyes on that tank destroyer that may have been right there. I'm not sure, but I'm going to fire a shot out just in case. Didn't look like it hit. He's still at 100%. Hopefully I'm not still lit. Let's see if we can get a shot off here. Not sure what I'm looking at. Contact on a bounce. Front, I think, or turret perhaps. No dice. Okay. This match could still go either way as it seems to be an arty party for our team. We need to be careful. No eyes on target. No silhouette. Still maintaining a sniper position. All of our arty's in the back here so we'll try to hold what we got. Push up just a little bit. Don't want to fall off here either. That's going to raise my gun so I don't have any... Depression. Alright. Artie's trying to throw some rounds at us. That's my biggest fear, especially in this thing that's made out of paper. Which is why I'm not really pushing too far forward. And Let's see if we can get this through here. Threading the needle for 308. Dealing with spam. He's going to maintain his position there. He's covered from our fire, so there's not much we can do unless we decide to drive all the way up to him. The artillery getting destroyed here, mostly because they're lit and no other reason, really. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what this leopard, I think it's a leopard one, decides to do. 
440 on target. He's now down to 14%, taking various hits. We've lit their artillery up. They shouldn't last very long. I don't think that Leopard is going to come back around here. Now we'll use this insane speed to perhaps get on target. Keeping in mind that that Leopard is, of course, fast as well. I believe they're close in tonnage, 39, 40-ish. Uh, 830 horsepower apiece. This tank being a touch lighter might be able to get a bit more speed. Target's down. Not a whole lot on my end. But we'll zoom in a little bit here. And see what happens. Still got that target down the line. Bat chat. TD lit. But out of sight, full 100%. Now this is where being a flank tank would come in handy. Just because we're going to be able to have that speed advantage. But do not underestimate, especially the fact that there's a bat chat hiding somewhere. That rapid reload will make short work of us. Here we go. Target sighted. Line it up. 440. Love the firepower. Let's see what he's looking at. Perhaps me there. He's going to get flanked while he's distracted. I've got him distracted and he's going to get some rapid fire on his 6. There we go. Now for the bat chat. Oh! That hurt. Bat chat's found me. Which is not good. He's going to be on target. We're going to try to get low. Just maintain speed. He's not going to be as accurate. Eyes waiting for it, but now he's managed to grab some cover, I think, behind a piece of artillery carcass. See if we can get a reload. He's on 3%. That is done. Not an amazing game for me by any means, but we are still alive and we've won, so I'll take it. <laughs> Got a couple of hits in there. That works. So, okay. That's that. So, taking a close-up inspection of these units, of course, uh, we can see that uh, World of Tanks is now adding to the collection of more modernized armored vehicles uh, going into the uh, you know the 1960s and whatnot things got a little lighter in terms of armor you know tank tactics changed it became more about firepower and accuracy than necessarily uh, armor just because you know rules of engagement seem to change you weren't running into as many massive tank battles anymore so this is what we end up with it's interesting to see it, though, in a game like World of Tanks, because that's all we have is massive tank battles. You're not dealing with infantry and whatnot either. But uh, nonetheless, pretty sharp-looking tank. It's got some nice uh, lines on it and uh, angles and sloping, of course. Once in a while, if you're angled properly, you can bounce or deflect something. Uh, but again, if you're looking at this turret armor 52 and 70 on the whole front, ouch. And, you know, that's... The upgraded turret, that's as good as it gets, ladies and gents. And again, I'm sure you've already tested it out and found out the hard way, which is why I'm going to say the same thing I do with the Centurions. Keep them as mobile snipers and flankers, and even more so in this case, because at least, you know, if you're looking at, uh, you know, the Centurions, I mean, that's, that's the wrong tier, but we're looking here, actually, a uh, lot better armor, but even... By this standard, this armor is even not so great at the higher tiers, so there's that. I try to not get hit in this beast, but, uh, you know, similar in terms of, of the guns, the accuracy. I believe you're dealing with uh, 0.32 at the same there. But things start to change, actually, when you get to the Leopard 1. You're going to get a few more hit points. You're a little heavier, but uh, you still got 830 horsepower. 65 is actually... The speed limit, not 64, as I had stated before. 
Uh, again, really nice looking tank. The hull is almost the same in design, but nice looking turret. I love the attention, the detail here with the basket and whatnot, the smoke launchers. Just makes the tank look cooler and gives it more character. It'd be cool if one day they started adding like gear and equipment to the outside of it. You know, camo netting, sandbags, thing like that to kind of give your tank some character or veterancy uh, as you level up or maybe things that you could pay for. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see that. Camouflage choices for the Germans are actually pretty pathetic, and I think they look really weird on the more modernized tanks, so it'd be interesting if they would get some newer camo patterns. Uh, also, I think the base color for some of the later German tanks was more of a green or, or a darker green or olive or hunter green type of color. I'm not sure, though. Maybe I'm wrong. But anyways, decent looking tank, but still same problem. You're running into bad turret and hull armor, uh, but you are going to get this beast of a gun and uh, not very familiar with it, but you can see that it goes up in terms of firing speed, 6.67, uh, and, and that could be pretty nice considering the amount of damage you're able to throw out, but you know the best thing, 0.3 accuracy. Man, I want that gun. That is right up my alley. I love high-powered, accurate weapons uh, because typically I'm able to aim. It's just okay. Is the gun going to hit? It comes down to that. And even if you look, if we go to the tech tree, I don't have my tier 10 uh, FV4202 yet. Of course, we're on the test server and I could just buy it, but I don't feel the need to because it's not about that. But uh, actually, we need to click on it and take a look at the final gun, which is the same gun that's on the uh, Centurion Mark 7 slash 1. You're still dealing with uh, generally... A little bit slower rate of fire. I believe on the FV4202, the gun might fire a touch faster than it does on the Centurion. But uh, for the most part, they're the same, I believe. Aiming time, 2.1, uh, 3, 2, 3.2 accuracy. So the Germans outdo the Brits in terms of accuracy. I'm not sure about gun depression. I'm going to say that the Brits probably have better gun depression because that's what they've been having close to the Americans. Don't know, so don't quote me on that, but that's my assumption. Um, you know, so interesting to see. Let's go ahead and take the Leopard 1 in. Again, I don't want to sit in the garage too much. There's uh, plenty of content out there, and you can, of course, try the uh, test server out for yourself if you want to you know, get used to these vehicles and read up a bit more on them. This is more so just me using them, giving you some first impressions, how I want to play them. Uh, obviously, very popular tanks. Uh, the German line of vehicles, extremely popular within World of Tanks. You know, if, if I were to bet on it, I'd say between the Russians and German uh, tanks, even the Americans, I'd probably say that the Germans and the Russians are probably the, some of the most popular. Uh, maybe the Americans following up. The British tanks, at least on the North American server, haven't really been that popular, but I think that's just due to closed-minded stubbornness, uh, you know, because I love the Centurions. Some people are terrible with them. I think I'm pretty good with them, uh, but to each their own. Depends on your playstyle. These things seem like they would be fantastic for my playstyle. The the maneuverability and the, just the gun accuracy and firepower. I'd love them, but I'm nowhere near them on the tech tree, and I just don't think it's going to be possible. So... Let's see what we've got going on here. Uh, our split doesn't look that good. Not at all. More of our forces heading in that direction. Very few of us heading this route. This may be an instant death for me. If it is, we'll just jump into another game. <laughs> so, I want to try to maintain a good hull down position perhaps. Let's let's get up here by the rocks for a little bit. See if we can grab any of these targets. Alright, what do we got? Somebody trying to flank here. Not happening. Shot out. There's a 317. Having that .3 accuracy, knowing that I can usually always guarantee a hit on the Centurions, I'm pretty sure the same will be said for this gun, except that may have gone into the dirt. Don't know. 471 there. Reload time, not too shabby though. That extra second or so is, is uh, pretty nice. You can feel it. 
that's a miss, but again, might have hit sand. It's hard to see from here. I'm only shooting at a silhouette. Don't really have eyes on that. No dice there. Shot out once again. Into the front line. And we are taking this team out. Shot out, immobilized from a 113. I'm guessing his reload isn't going to be fantastical. And I'm going to save my repair kit for now because I'm sure I could come into contact with worse situations. Target down, trying to go for a flank. Not sure where that 113 is. Got to be careful there. Let's see if we can come over here. Enemy is hit. And I believe that's him, is it not? Oh, somebody else is throwing rounds at us. But he's going to take some fire. Friendly is answering in kind. Looks like we've got a Brit. Canarvan. Don't forget we have some cover here. Let him have it. He's down. Took a hit to the ammo rack, it seems. All right. All units will be converging on hostiles capping. So this shouldn't be a problem. Love this speed. Wow. To have this speed, this firepower. Depending on the situation. I don't know. I mean... Yeah, I hate to say it, but there's some cases where where I feel that this would probably outdo the Centurion with my playstyle. See where this guy's at. Nothing there that I can see. And that's unfortunate because I really love those tanks and I still think they're great. But the thing is, they they have more armor, but I almost feel like that armor isn't that great it's not good enough to make the difference and and you know if your armor is as bad as it is on the centurions what would you rather have the speed and mobility of the german tanks or a little bit more armor on those british tanks and 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 uh, a far slower speed i mean they only do 40 kilometers compared to 65 I think they have more horsepower, but, you know, they can accelerate pretty quick uh, if we take a look here. So Centurion, they do 950 engine power, but 52 weight. So if we go back to the Leopard, you know, 40 weight with 830, eh, I mean, so it's not really going to make that much of a difference. And 65 and the traverse speed of 54. I mean, it's it's phenomenal. And and again, if you're the kind of player that tries to not get hit, this is a fantastic tank. You know, even the Leopard prototype. But the Leopard 1, wow. Now it is, we are looking at tier 10 here. My expertise is with the, uh, the Mark 7 slash 1. I haven't played much of the FV4202, which is the tier 10 British tank. It's slimmer, lower profile, but it's almost a Centurion still. It's still a Centurion at the, at the core. It's designed, you know, uh, to be an extension of it. So there's that. Let's go do another one in the Leopard one. We'll stick to that for now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've played a little bit with the 4202 on the test servers here and there and and again you know they, they still maintain the same gun the same speed from the seven slash one and it's it's hard to, to you know to compare it to this when you've got that speed and maneuverability um when you're somebody like me that loves hit and run tactics so it's kind of painful to admit but i don't know these could be new contenders unless they get hit with a nerf bat which is quite possible because generally it seems that sometimes Wargaming likes to have people spend their money on the grind and then uh, all of a sudden, oops, time to nerf, and then you've made your way up and there you go. So they did it to the M48 on the American tree, I believe. used to be uh, 
a lot better than it is today, I believe, and then it kind of got hit a little bit and disappointed quite a few people, although it still seems like it's an amazing tank. Uh, I'm going to hang out midfield. You know why? Because I know that I have the speed to be able to change my uh, approach if I need to. If they need help on the other side, I'm fast enough to get there. It's not one of those heavy tanks like the T-34 that once you've commit to a, committed to a side, you're stuck. So Let's see what's going on over here. But, you know, don't get me wrong, I still love my Centurions, always will. Uh, phenomenal tanks. That didn't go anywhere. Wow, somehow just managed to, to scrape on that one. I think the British tanks have that, just that touch of, of survivability that makes them worth it. They can stay alive long enough to be a threat. Whereas this thing, if I get into trouble like I'm about to right now, it's all over. So, there is that. And, and sometimes that extra armor that the, that the Centurion tanks are going to have is actually worth it. And, and maybe the speed isn't necessarily the saving grace to this thing. Because, let's face it, if you set up in a good position, snipe from a good distance, you know, you'll be fine. But here, you know, right now we're looking at, well, we might need to retreat. This could be bad. I'm going to try to angle as much as I can. Thankfully, we're bailed out by a friendly tank destroyer, I think. I uh, lost a friend there. And we've got another one coming around. We're going to back out of here. There's a shot. I'm going to try to angle as much as I can. But, of course, we know that's just not going to do anything at these ranges. Uh, what we need to do is try to find even more cover. We've got... Oh, shots are being fired around that curve. This looks like it's going to be bad. That, that TD on the other side uh, might help a little bit. Oh, there's this guy. Oh, snap! Yeah, that's one tank destroyer you do not want to get hit by. <laughs> so there's that. Okay, well, there's an example of a bad game. Not necessarily the fault of the tank... More so, my tactics on that one were just flawed. Uh, so there's that one. Ideally, you know, I want to say more of an open ground, long-range sniper. So playing the CQB game out here, not the best thing to do. But we were kind of outnumbered, too. They managed to just slam through here and, and grab us. So, this guy, not having a good day. Oh, Artie comes in, just for a bit of revenge though. Maybe, can he get a final shot on this tank destroyer? 16%, one shot and it's over for either. There we go, taking him with him at least. That's always good to do. Always interesting lineups on the test server, of course. It's uh, never what you're going to run into on the live game, but uh, interesting nonetheless. A lot of artillery in testing here, it seems, for some reason. Got a couple units here. It could have been close. I didn't manage to do a whole heck of a lot there. Came around that corner and just got diced easily. If anything, I probably should have just held back. The speed that that tank has, I'm not used to it, and I need to realize, hey, you know what? turn the tank around, not reverse, and just go around the other way. The thing does 64 for frack's sakes. I didn't need to sit there and just back up. I could have ran around and come up on their 6. But, you know, I think I'm too used to, to the 40 kph on the Centurion thinking, well, maybe I'm just going to back up and, and get a, a hold down position. So, we're going to end it off on here. It looks like the GW type. That's that. And... They get to live due to cap. So yeah, nothing amazing there. Very, very bad game, actually. Nothing to take home with us, so that's that. But I'm still impressed, uh, even regardless of that game. Still really impressed with, uh, with this bad boy. It has the potential to get a lot done, you know? Um, 
So you have to really think about what you want. Do you want a little bit more survivability with maybe the Centurion tanks? And of course, I'm not even comparing it to the other tanks. We've got American tanks. We've got, uh, you know, the, the Russians and the French, Chinese now. There's so many other tanks that we could compare it to. I'm just comparing it to the Centurions because those are my highest tier mediums. And they're my favorite. I think you can closely compare them just because... Out of the more modernized tanks, the newer model tanks, it's going to be between these Leopards and Centurions and the FV, whatever. Uh, I think the Americans might get a newer patent, the M60. That's, I think, uh, something that is being tested by the super testers. We don't have access to it. I don't know what the deal is with that. I guess that'll come in after the M48, perhaps, maybe, or a different line. I'm not sure. We'll have to see how that goes. But uh, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's been my look at the Leopard Prototype A as well as the Leopard 1. Perhaps we can take another look at these sometime soon if the test server is still up and running. But with that said, I'll see you on the next one.